Kai Pacha with the weekly Pele report. I'm here in Eleusis, Greece, near Athens, visiting the ruins of an ancient, amazing, powerful culture. This is June 22nd of 2016. And this is a very special place. I'm going to be coming up here to the cave where Hades, the god of the underworld, got very lonely and came and stole Persephone down into the underworld. It's a whole mythological story. I'll try to share if there's time. But in the meantime, let's look at what's going on this week because some of you may feel like you're in the underworld. <laughs> Venus still is in the underworld. We cannot see her. She will not be rising for another month or so. Okay, so this is very pertinent, potent time of dealing with that underworld energy. I'm going to try to hold the wind down today because it's been really getting the best of me lately. But I just want to take you on a little tour. There's a whole big site here with all kinds of where there used to be temples. The moon now is in Aquarius. It stays in Aquarius until Friday where it goes into Pisces. And then she moves into Aries on Monday to come into a third quarter square with the sun that's now in Cancer along with Venus. And next week, Wednesday, before you hear my voice again, Mercury will have joined the sun and Venus in Cancer. So we'll have the Sun, Venus, and Mercury in Cancer. I have to talk about that a little bit, right? Coming up too, we know that you know, Pluto is in Capricorn. Get into that opposition going on there. But the big news for this week is that Jupiter is conjunct the North Node of the Moon for the third time, the third pass, going direct. Jupiter has been playing around with that north node of the moon for a while now. The future destiny, the unknown, soul intention on a planetary level, the sign of Virgo opposite Neptune. I've been going on and on and on about that. And what's going on also, of course, is that yesterday and today, of course, this goes on for more than a day, Mercury has been in square to the moon's nodes. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means, yeah? So, and these nodes are also trying Pluto. So this is the cave of Hades. I'm coming up to it right now. Oh my God. It's my first time here. I haven't even looked at it myself. So I'm going to have to sit here with this cave behind me. <laughs> All right. Monday, Mercury sextiles, Uranus. Venus, trines, Neptune. So we've got a whole lot going on. A whole lot to talk about and discuss with the energies of these days. Let me look at the camera and get back to you. Okay, everybody. Yamas. <laughs> That's what they say here. Outside of Athens, we went to see the Temple of Poseidon the other night, looking out over the sea. I was gifted this trident for Poseidon. Today, as you see at the beginning, I was at the gateway to Hades. At the end of this report, I'll give you a, a picture of the tunnel that Persephone emerged out of when she came up from Hades. I don't know if you know that story of the mythology, but Hades came up and abducted Persephone and brought her down into the underworld and fed her six pomegranate seeds. And the law was that once you partook of food from the underworld, you were never allowed to leave. But since her mother Demeter wanted her back so bad, she sent winter upon the land. And so, 
the gods all, you know, the humans were all, uh, you know, up in a roar. <laughs> and Demeter said, I'm not going to bring rain and shine and your fruits will all die. And she brought winter and it all fell upon the land because she grieved her daughter. And so they made an arrangement. Since she had only had six seeds, she would only have to stay in the underworld for six months out of the year. And then she would reemerge. So this is the beginnings, this is the explanation, this is the understanding of the seasons of summer and winter, was when Persephone would go underground and join Pluto in the underworld. You know, Venus is in the underworld right now. And we're all kind of, you know, in this underworld, even though it may be summer for some of you. It's time to go down. Black Moon Lilith is in Scorpio. Mars is going retrograde. It's going to station and go direct, finally, <laughs> next week. Whoosh! On the 29th, Mars turns direct at 23 degrees and heads back towards Sagittarius. But for now, this Mercury squaring the nodes, Mercury squaring Venus. Mercury was the only god that could go down and visit the underworld and come back up again. So we have this theme, and I talked about Gemini in that webinar or back before. Yes, with the heavenly and the earthly. Okay, the above and below, these twins, the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I mean, this is just like a time where we're all needing to end the illusions of Neptune, end the illusions of the Piscean Age. And this process of ending illusions is part of the year of purification. And this ending of illusions has to do with disappointment. It has to do with sorrow. It has to do with people not living up to what you thought with you not getting the return that you expected. So Neptune and our innocent, naive self, conjunct the South Node, can take things for granted. Oh, it's gonna be all right. Oh, they're a good person. Oh, I can trust this and that and God. God is with me. Goddess will support me. I'll never die. I have no fear. And guess what? <laughs> It's not all a bucket of roses. <laughs> it's not all the big dream down here. And this is this Jupiter, Mercury square Jupiter, Mercury square the nodes, opposite Saturn. This is like, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. See what's really in front of your nose. This is Gemini. See what's really in front of your face. See what's really going on. And Sun, Venus, and Cancer. Are you safe? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you nurturing yourself? Are you loving yourself? Feel your feelings now. The feelings are the underworld. And our feelings hold great wisdom. So we have to be careful of the surface, the air signs of Gemini. Yes, you know? has to do with the surface of things or the bullshit of like what I've been told, okay? And, and you, it's your feelings and your intuition. That's the underworld that comes around and straightens you out in so many ways. Your feelings, you know, follow that gut, follow that instinct and listen carefully to yourself to your inner world. And I also really feel that this is a particular time as we approach this age of Aquarius. We're going through a kind of initiation. I've talked about this before, the north node of the moon in Virgo. Virgo Pisces, the axis of initiation. And what is this initiation? Well, we're getting initiated into community. We're getting initiated into the age of Aquarius which is community. And part of that community is intradependence and it's co-creation. So it's kind of like 
there's no more external authorities, be they governments or teachers or leaders, that are going to take care of our problems for us. And, you know, we can just like fall in this hierarchy and listen to the priest in the pulpit, okay, or the, you know, the one with the microphone and the speech or whatever. We got to solve our own problems. We got to really come to our own rescue. Not be victims or martyrs and not be blaming other people. But like really be awakened and really take care and nurture and become our own mother, our own father, our own protector. And on the other hand of that, I also see this Jupiter in Virgo, this North Node in Virgo, as being this time of humility. And, and it's a time where, you know, the leaders are also falling down. The ones on the top, they can't manage the people. They can't hold the energy, okay? Because the energy is rising and the people are rising and everyone is becoming more empowered and everybody is waking up. So we have to work out things together. So you may be one of those that's kind of the victim or the martyr that's been on the bottom and been used and abused and it's time for you to stand up. And, or, maybe a little bit of both. There may be other places in your life where you're the leader or you're the one on top and you make the mistakes or you bumble or you fumble or you fail. And then it's coming down. Yeah, Virgo is humility. This is us coming down. We, you know, and it's almost like none of us alone has all the answers, has all the money, has all the joy, has all the strength. It's like we're all kind of learning how frail we are. We're all kind of learning in a way how much we can be hurt. We're all learning how sensitive we are. And, and how sometimes we can be scared because things are so freaking crazy. <laughs> it can be scary. It's like the twilight zone. <laughs> These are crazy times. Do not be surprised at how far off your expectations or your beliefs or what you thought was going to be happening you know, at what it's like a totally different movie than what you had planned. And part of that differentness, I'm just waiting for a wave to come up behind me and like wash me off the rock. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Oh my God. You know, I'm on this wet rock here. Anyway, where was I? Well, let, let me talk about the mantra a little bit. Yeah, the mantra is... Sometimes life hurts, no matter what I do, in order to maintain and try to regain, I admit I need help from you. In La Kesh Ala Kin. This is not a philosophy. This is not a thought. This is not a concept. We're moving into the reality as we move into the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension where separation becomes less and less and less of a reality and union becomes more and more and more the call of the game, the name of the day, whatever. We come into this place and I don't want to say codependency. Okay, I want to say interdependency, intradependency. But we do need to acknowledge that we want to create a safety net, that we want to create a community, that it takes groups of people. It takes a tribe and we want to find our tribe and find our people and find our families. And they may not be blood or hereditary families but those of like-minded souls, nature, and beliefs. So really, you know, this is a time where we, it can hurt. 
when we feel abandoned, when we feel unsupported, when you know things go awry and, and they don't work the way we were told or the way we expected, and we end up losing. This is Scorpio, loss, betrayal, abandonment. This is financially, sexually, emotionally, you know, on every level, we can really be feeling, okay, like somewhere, somehow along the way, it's hard for us to trust and believe in each other. And yet that is exactly what we need to do. And this brings me back to the beginning. We need to trust our intuition. And it's not what we're being told or what we see, but we have to develop our extrasensory perception to really understand, to really know, to really feel if this is right, if this relationship is true, if this is the future that my soul is calling for. So I want to say be careful, yeah? I want to say really watch out. This is a time of crisis, yeah? Virgo is crisis consciousness, and you can have health crisis, financial crisis, relationship crisis, and all of this crisis is really pointing, you know, to the need for us to find and choose carefully, and also not be too proud to ask for help, and not be too proud. I was going to say, you know, admit that I need more from you. You can, you can change out, you know, help and more in that mantra, however you want it, yeah? <laughs> Either one of them works. If it's a relationship that you've been in for a while, you could say, I need more from you. Or if it's a new relationship, you might just say, you know what? There's some times when I need a little help from my friends. Yeah, it can happen on many different levels, but no one is an island. We are not alone. And this is kind of what we're really needing to like acknowledge, live with, accept, enjoy. <laughs> that would be the best. <laughs> Sometimes life hurts no matter what I do. In order to maintain and try to regain, I admit, I need help from you. Let's all help each other. Treat each other with kindness, with tolerance, with humility. Try to get along on this planet and have a good time. <laughs> Namaste. Aloha. So much love.